Hi, Jeff Nelson. Thanks for tuning in. Does a low-fat, plant-based, no-oil diet actually reverse heart disease? Short answer, absolutely. When someone even raises this as a question, you have to wonder why. In this video, I'm going to quickly review some evidence on the question. A week or two ago, Dr. Esselstyn himself gave a short presentation at an online event on this subject. I'm going to share a bit of that, and then I'm going to share Kim Williams on the subject. Dr. Williams is the past president of the American College of Cardiology. Next, I'm going to play some clips from a newly minted cardiologist, Dr. Danielle Bellardo. Dr. Bellardo asserts that Ornish and Esselstyn's diets are a failure at reversing heart disease. Finally, I'll take a look at what actually is going on here, which is the failure of cardiology. We'll look at evidence which I believe shows very strongly that cardiology is a failed specialty. It's largely a shakedown of the public, and Dr. Ornish and Esselstyn present a threat to many cardiologists. And I'll show some research that strongly supports this view. Okay, so Dr. Esselstyn in his recent talk reviewed some of the evidence that diet can reverse heart disease. And he showed results from angiograms, pulse volume tests, and scans. He showed evidence not only of reversal of symptoms, but of physical, actual, anatomical reversals using diet. He started with some scans and said all of these scans were reviewed in triplicate by uh, Cleveland Clinic's vascular core laboratory by senior technicians that do this all day long and uh, for nat national medical trials. So when they give a percentage of blockage, Dr. Esselstyn says we know it's accurate. This was the first pair of angiograms showing a blockage in the left anterior descending artery and a 10% reversal with Dr. Esselstyn's diet. This is the circumflex artery and a 20% reversal. This is the right coronary artery in another patient and a 30% reversal. This one is interesting. This was a physician at the Cleveland Clinic. He had a cardiology workup one month before the first scan. They found nothing amiss. And then a month later in November, he had a massive heart attack. This was the lower of the left anterior descending artery. You can see it's sort of moth eaten. They couldn't do stents or bypass because it was too far down. But look at the improvement on the right. That's 30 months later. And Dr. Esselstyn says that a well-known, celebrated cardiologist did these scans. And then when he saw the huge improvement through diet in the after scan, he said, quote, perhaps Esselstyn and Ornish are trying to teach us something. The first angiography was done in 1958 at the Cleveland Clinic Lab by a doctor named Soans. Physicians from around the world flocked to Cleveland to learn how to do angiography and then catheterization. Dr. Esselstyn says that in the following 30 years, there were never any studies of published of angiograms showing reversal of disease using diet. That is, until Dean Orna showed it in 1991, and then in 1995, so did Dr. Esselstyn. So let's look at a new series of angiograms that Dr. Esselstyn presented at this recent meeting. This next is not a Cleveland Clinic patient, but it's a very interesting story that I want to share with you. This is a 44-year-old man from Florida who in July of 2017 had a heart attack. And at the time of his angiography, uh, you can see here where the arrow is pointing, he had an 80% blockage of his circumflex artery. And because of other blockages, in addition to this one, his cardiologist advised that he have bypass surgery. But the patient had been reading a book called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and told the cardiologist that he would prefer that seeing what he could do with this nutritional change. And a year went by and the cardiologist said, I think we better check again because I'm still not sure about that uh, plant-based nutrition you've been eating. So he had another angiogram in July of 2018. Now, what was formerly 80% blocked is now 40 to 45% blocked. And to complete the story, Interestingly enough, 30 months later, 
he had, excuse me, 18 months later, he had another angiogram. And lo and behold, it's now gone. Now, the point that I think is rather fascinating about this and, uh, and rather powerful at the same time, this patient had no support from a single medical personnel for doing this plant-based nutrition other than just reading a book. And look with anything quite so simplistic, how he was able to, to not only halt disease progression, but get disease reversal. Again, reversal of symptoms and, and reversal of coronary artery atherosclerotic anatomy. One of the arguments that a dermatologist leveled against the work of Dr. Ornish and Esselstyn is that angiograms aren't always completely reliable. Doctors may have learned ways to make reversal improvements look a little bit better than they actually are based on the angle used to take the scan or whatever tricks. And the reasoning is since there are some sketchy nuclear cardiologists out there, we should be suspicious of angiograms like the ones Dr. Esselstyn shares, never mind that they were done by some of the top nuclear cardiologists in the world. The truth is you can't fake an 80% reversal in stenosis. The attempt to claim Esselstyn's and Ornish scans are faked or fudged or whatever is just a smear. The recent 80% reversal scans Dr. Esselstyn just showed, these were done at a hospital in Florida by a doctor who knew nothing about Esselstyn before doing this. And it's actually not uncommon for some cardiologists to have epiphanies when they see scans of people who've reversed heart disease by using the low-fat plant-based diet. A famous example is a doctor who actually ran a nuclear cardiology lab for years, so he knew something about angiograms. He went on to become the head of cardiology in his hospital and then became the president of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. Kim Williams. So let's see what Dr. Williams, let's see what stock he puts in scans of diet and heart disease. Before I became a chief of cardiology, I was running a nuclear cardiology lab. And it turns out that nuclear cardiology is one of those areas where you can assess the blood flow to the heart non-invasively and so Dean Ornish had indeed published literature, and so had uh, Dr. Esselstyn, about the effects of uh, plant-based nutrition on the blood flow as shown on a nuclear scan. But I hadn't paid much, too much attention to it. I'd heard of it, but I hadn't paid too much attention. And it turns out that uh, in, on my American Heart Association diet, um, it turns out that my LDL cholesterol was very high. And when I found that out, it was about a week after I'd had this interaction with a lady who um, had come to my lab and we normally, you know, one of the best things about a, a nuclear scan is that you can compare an old one and a new one. And when you do that comparison, you can tell the clinician who's ordering the test exactly whether that patient is getting better, getting worse or staying the same. Well, her scan was dramatically better. Now I've seen that before, but it's usually in the setting of having had bypass surgery or a stent. And in her case, it would have been at least three different stents because it was three different arteries. And we try to collect that information and be very clear about, you know, this person had, any, had a, uh, an intervention at time zero, and now it's, you know, they're following up and, and you know, this is the post-operative scan. Well, none of that data was there. And so I'm saying, well, our staff must have somehow missed uh, the stents. I looked in our records, there was nothing there. So, well, maybe she moved over to another institution and had a bypass. I don't know. So I actually called her on the phone so I could actually get the report exactly right. And she said, no, I didn't have no stent, no bypass surgery. All I did was the Ornish diet. And so I immediately uh, start looking it up and see JAMA articles, the Journal of American Medical Association, where uh, Dr. Ornish has published uh, very clearly that if you do plant-based nutrition, you will decrease the amount of plaque in your arteries, and you will therefore improve the, improve the blood flow. So I had a really good um, sort of uh, introduction to this before I found out about my own cholesterol being high. And of course, went uh, plant-based knowing that whatever uh, disease was about to get me was going to be a little bit better and a little bit later, uh, at least. Not only did Dr. Williams adopt a plant-based diet himself based on seeing dramatic reversal in angiograms by a patient of his who went on Dr. Ornish's diet, but he himself has become a major promoter of reversing heart disease through the plant-based diet. 
Now, cardiologist Dr. Daniel Bellardo says that she has personal experience that shows that diets of Ornish and Esselstyn don't work. She says the belief by the public that Dr. Esselstyn's diet does work to reverse heart disease is actually quite dangerous. That's the word she uses. I'm gonna play a clip, but I want to say I don't watch videos with Dr. Bellardo or her dermatologist friends, but a friend of mine did, and he told me about what I'm about to show you. And this is from a, to like a three hour video. So to find this clip, I use a company called Otter, and they will automatically transcribe anything you upload. It's a great service. This isn't a paid endorsement. So I uploaded this, the three hours was transcribed in about 20 minutes. I then searched for the term heart attack in the transcript, and I got this excerpt. When people think they can reverse where, where the misnomer, which is dangerous, so I've had two patients thought they could reverse their coronary artery disease based on diet, both decided to not undergo guideline-directed procedural therapy, both had massive heart attacks, and one had to have a transplant, okay? So uh, avoiding guideline-directed medical and procedural therapy in lieu of a diet because you think it can reverse your heart disease is not safe. The word heart attack came up in one other time in the video transcript, and it was Dr. Bellardo giving more detail about one of these cases. I had a patient of mine that came to see me for a second opinion because he had triple vessel coronary artery disease, including a left main lesion that was almost 70%. He was under the impression from YouTube and from plant-based nutrition, et cetera, that he could reverse his coronary heart artery disease with a plant-based diet. He refused to be on the statin and aspirin. He came to see me at this time. I was a fellow, a cardiology fellow. So I saw him with a preceptor, was an interventional cardiologist. We pulled out his cath. We told him, absolutely not. Not only do you need to be on your dual antiplatelet therapy, you need to be on a high-intensity statin, you need to be on a PCSK9 inhibitor, you also need coronary artery bypass surgery. Okay, the implication of Dr. Bellardo here is that her patients made a mistake. They made a bad decision. They ignored her advice that the Ornish and Esselstyn diets wouldn't work, and now they are worse off because they had heart attacks. That's her position. But I personally believe that this may be conceit and arrogance speaking. That's because we know that many people who follow the kind of advice Dr. Bellardo gave go on to have heart attacks, or they get brain damage during bypass, or they die during bypass. In fact, there's not very good evidence that Dr. Bellardo's guideline-driven therapy is worth the paper it's written on. What if cardiology is just an expensive racket? What if a lot of what cardiologists do is largely useless. It helps them, the cardiologists, but doesn't help the patient much. Well, here are a couple of studies looking at how well some of this advice works. This study was called Orbita. Orbita was a blinded study to test whether giving someone a stent actually had any effect. It's well established that stents don't prolong life or prevent heart attacks unless you're right in the middle of a heart attack and they're trying to open an artery at that exact moment. So stents are pretty useless. But the one thing that stents might do, it's been thought, is to give symptom relief for people with angina. People with angina and severe coronary stenosis, they get pain. They're unable to exercise very long and have to stop after a short time. So they give them a stent to treat that. The procedure is called PCI. The authors of this study noted that nobody had ever done a blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized trial to see whether it's true that stents help angina. So that's what this study did. It was done in England. They took 230 patients with angina and separated them into two groups. One group had a catheter inserted into their artery, a balloon was inflated, and a stent was put in. The other group had a catheter inserted into their artery, but no balloon or no stent. This was the placebo group. None of the patients knew which group they were in. After six months, the researchers found no difference between the two groups. The conclusion states, in patients with medically treated angina and severe coronary stenosis, PCI did not increase exercise time by more than the effect of a placebo procedure. So angioplasty is no better than a placebo. In other words, it's an expensive, useless procedure. Here's another study. This study was called ischemia. They took over 5,000 patients who had stable coronary disease or moderate or severe ischemia, which is where there's restricted blood flow to your heart. They split them into two groups. The first group 
got medical therapy plus angioplasty, and over a quarter of this group got bypass surgery. The second group, the control group, just got medical therapy and didn't have any bypass or invasive procedures. What they found after 3.2 years was that there was no difference between the groups. The one who got the stents and the bypass had the same number of deaths as those who didn't. There was no difference in deaths, no difference in myocardial infarction, or in hospitalization for unstable angina, or in heart failure, or in resuscitated cardiac arrest. Here's the conclusion. Among patients with stable coronary disease and moderate or severe ischemia, we did not find evidence that an initial invasive strategy, as compared with an initial conservative strategy, reduced the risk of ischemic cardiovascular events or death from any cause over a median of 3.2 years. And they made projections out to five years and found no difference between the groups. The researchers did note that there were procedural infarctions suffered by the intervention group that didn't happen in those in the control group who didn't have procedures. These two well-devised randomized trials tested the therapy directed by guidelines and found that in reality there's no big benefit compared to not doing those guideline-directed treatments. And bypass and stents are actually dangerous. There was a slightly greater risk of heart attack to people getting the treatments versus those who didn't. There's one well-established benefit, though, to bypass at, that I didn't mention, and that is they cost an average of $123,000. Cardiologists earn a lot of money off them. The starting salary for an interventional cardiologist is $648,000 a year. That's the highest in medicine. And this is from Merritt Hopkins, which is the top physician recruiting firms. They place doctors in thousands of jobs, so they know the numbers. In both of these studies on angioplasty and bypass, the participants received guideline-directed medical therapy, but how useful really is that particular therapy? Dr. Esselstyn, in his recent talk, calls this palliative cardiology. Palliative means it just relieves pain without dealing with the cause or of the condition. Most, if not all, of cardiology is palliative. That is, most cardiologists aren't trying to address the cause. Let's take a look at Dr. Esselstyn's medical therapy in his program because it's very different. His therapy is built around food. He published a study in 2014 which looked at 198 consecutive patients who came to him for help to prevent and reverse their heart disease. 177 of those patients decided to follow and adhere to his diet. Out of that group, over about four years, only one person had a serious cardiovascular event, a small stroke in a man living in China who was trying to follow the program. That means Dr. Esselstyn had a failure rate with his patients of 0.6%, and he had a 99.4% success rate. Contrast that with Dr. Bellardo, who had a 100% failure rate with her two patients hoping to use diet to reverse heart disease, and a 0% success rate. When Dr. Bellardo's patients said they wanted to use diet to reverse their heart disease, did she say, hey, it's your lucky day. I know Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Ornish personally. Would you like me to put you in touch with them directly? That could be really helpful to you. Certainly, knowing that Dr. Esselstyn has such a great record of success, that's what I would do. Dr. Esselstyn educates his patients, has them write down everything they eat, and he checks to make sure they understand and are following the program correctly. That can help prevent a lot of mistakes, errors, and heart attacks in high-risk patients. In fact, I've sent dozens of people to Dr. Esselstyn over the years who had contacted me about their heart disease, even recently during COVID, and I hear back from many of them thanking me you know, profusely for making the introduction, saying they got a huge benefit. So making a connection between her patients and the guys who have pioneered heart disease reversal through diet, that would have been a wonderful thing and could have helped ensure her patient's success. We know that a lot of the guideline-directed therapy cardiologists offer is heavily influenced by the food and drug industry. This is a small part of a long list of food companies involved with these cardiology organizations. These are the very foods that cause heart disease. Dr. Esselstyn showed these slides in his presentation and the drug companies which are partnered with the cardiology associations. Again, these are just a few. These companies make a lot of money off these lucrative drugs and procedures, which in reality don't do all that much. 
Now, I don't mean to single out Dr. Bellardo, though she is the person uh, trying to malign the work of Ornish and Esselstyn. In my opinion, most cardiologists, not all of them, but most refuse to go after the cause of heart disease. They're palliative cardiologists, and they're in it for the money. Here's an interventional cardiologist from Harvard, C. Michael Gibson. This is his Twitter account. He's got close to a half million followers, so obviously the cardiology world looks up to this guy. He's likely a millionaire many times over. And as a leading cardiologist, he's someone well-paid by drug companies seeking to influence the guidelines for directed therapy. Here on his account at Wikidoc, you can see who he gets money from. And well, there are way too many drug companies for me to read off here. There are literally dozens paying him, and he's getting money for consulting and research grant support on an ongoing basis. And if you scroll down, you can see he lists his wife's conflicts, and she's getting money from just about as many pharmaceutical companies as he is. So this may be why other rich cardiologists admire him. Look at all that money. It says Dr. Gibson's research, quote, has largely focused on investigating the pathophysiology of coronary artery disease and the efficacy of pharmacological and device-based therapies. Stents, bypass, contraptions, drugs. Remember, heart disease is the number one killer in America. One person dies every 36 seconds in the U.S. from cardiovascular disease. About 655,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's one in every four deaths. And despite decades of research and all this money paid to cardiologists, it's still the leading cause of death. In fact, cardiologists are doing an increasingly worse job over the years. You can find a lot of articles like this one. The number of people dying from heart and circulatory diseases before they reach their 75th birthday is on the rise for the first time in 50 years. This is from the AARP website. The number of middle-aged Americans dying from heart disease is on the rise. According to a new report from the CDC, which looked at the two leading causes of death, heart disease and cancer, for adults aged 45 to 64. I'm 64. Lots of studies like this. The decrease in the percentage of people with ideal cardiovascular health over the past 20 years, mostly because of decreases in the proportion of those with an ideal body mass index, blood pressure, blood glucose, and serum cholesterol levels was associated with higher odds of subclinical disease and risk of overt cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. These are issues that arise from food. And Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Ornish are actually focused on the cause of heart disease, food. While highly paid cardiologists are working on gizmos, drugs and interventions, palliative care, where you can make a lot of money, there's a difference. The question isn't whether or not low-fat, plant-based diet reverses heart disease. It clearly does. The question is, since cardiology is a failed specialty, why does anyone listen to these people? Back in 2008, in the journal Circulation, they published this. We could prevent 90% of heart attacks. Such a claim would have seemed outrageous in the 1960s, and so on. So it's long recognized that 90% can be stopped. Why haven't cardiologists stopped 90% of heart attacks? If you're looking to prevent heart attacks, it's not hard. It starts with diet along with exercise and not smoking. There's no mystery and unfortunately not much profit for cardiologists to prevent heart attacks. Maybe that's the reason some of the biggest advances in heart disease prevention and reversal have come from doctors who are not part of the cardiology ripoff racket. It turns out you can learn more about how to prevent and reverse heart disease by watching YouTube videos of doctors like Esselstyn, Ornish, Williams, and some others than by getting opinion after lousy second opinion from cardiologists who push the lucrative guideline-directed therapy that probably won't save you and may benefit you only as much as what a placebo would do like those 700 bypasses in the study of 5,000 people I just showed you who got zero meaningful benefit over the placebo group. I believe people like the patients Dr. Bellardo saw could have been helped by a caring doctor like Dr. Esselstyn who would want to help those patients achieve their own goals. In my opinion, a good doctor ultimately tries to give the very best support to the decision that the patient makes for their own life and their own well-being. These two patients who Dr. Bellardo saw chose to ignore her advice. 
she's certain if only they had uh, had a bypass that they would have been much better today. But that's not what the research shows. Bottom line, if you're considering using diet and lifestyle to prevent or reverse heart disease, see a doctor like Williams, Esselstyn, Ornish, or the others out there whose patients are successful. Understand that cardiologists make a lot of money and understandably might be upset or feel threatened by, their, by the success of Ornish and Esselstyn, and they may cast aspersions on their work. I'm reminded of a quote which is attributed to George Bernard Shaw, people who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. Okay, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Please give this video a like, unless you didn't. Thank you.